Good morning, I'm Councillor Glenn and today is Saturday, July 27th, I believe. Uh, I'm Councillor Glenn and this is my weekly update. This morning I'm at Alexander Grove Park, uh, one of the nicest spots here in Stittsville. Um, some massive trees, some of the biggest, oldest trees in our community are here at Alexander Grove Park. There's a baseball diamond, there's a uh, tennis court, there's a kids playground, there's soccer fields in the back there right next to Johnny LaRue Arena here, so you can access this off of uh, Warner Colpitts Drive off of Stittsville Main Street. Uh, a great place if you've never been here, come check it out. Uh, bring a little picnic lunch for under the trees. Um, today though, there's a big event happening here from noon to five. It's West Side Pride, uh, which is a pride festival for the West End. So uh, I'll be dropping by at that and there'll be lots of, uh, lots of organizations, groups, entertainment here all afternoon. So check that out. There's a lot going on today in Stittsville. Uh, there is a hazardous waste depot over at Canadian Tire Center. Uh, so if you've got some old paint or old, uh, I don't know, propane tanks, whatever it might be, uh, you can bring them to Canadian Tire Center. The city is running this and they'll take them from you for free. We're trying to keep all that stuff out of the landfill. So these hazardous waste depots are one of the ways to do that. I think it's from 10 to three. Not entirely sure. The information's on my website. Uh, it's happening all day long over at Canadian Tire Center. I'll be dropping in a little bit later this morning at the BAPS Walkathon. Uh, it's over in Canada. They're raising funds for CNIB and the William Osler Health, Health Foundation, so a really good cause there. Uh, I'm going to drop into the Lionheart's headquarters on Iber Road where they're doing another great potato rescue. They're going to be taking delivery of over 20,000 pounds of potatoes and then over the next few days distributing them to community organizations all over the city. And then of course West Side Pride happening this afternoon from noon till 5 right here at Alexander Grove Park. And uh, there's the regular weekly events as well. There's the craft and vendor show, actually almost across the street on Stittsville, Maine, uh, at the uh, Brokerlink building near, near Frederick Banting High School. Um, and there is the park run this morning as well, the weekly Saturday park run. Dozens of people every morning uh, getting together to do a, uh, a park run, a five kilometer run over on Abbott Street near Granite Ridge. Tomorrow, we're doing the grand opening of Silas Bradley Park tomorrow morning. Uh, that's over in the Edenwild neighborhood. On July 31st, there's a movie night at the Stittsville Villa on Stittsville Main Street. Uh, all this information is on my website, of course, at glengower.ca slash events. You can see all sorts of activities coming up today, tomorrow, and over the next few weeks here in Stittsville. A reminder today, if you're going out beyond Stittsville, I know some of you leave Stittsville sometimes, uh, there is a closure of the Queensway happening all this weekend. They're replacing the bridge at Preston Street. So a total closure of the Queensway. So plan out an alternate route or, or maybe put off that uh, downtown or East End errand if you can. Uh, it was a busy week here in Stittsville. Uh, the big thing was the water main, water main break on Stittsville, Maine, not too hard, far from here, uh, kind of in front of uh, Malkin Street um, and, and Frederick Banting School. Um, thank you to everybody for your patience. It completely shut down Stittsville, Maine from about 5 a.m., I think, to 7 p.m., 8 p.m. Uh, luckily, there was no sinkhole. When, sometimes when there's a water main break, that water can um, wash away um, the, the ground underneath the road, but uh, they managed to stop the flow of the water before that happened, but they did had to have to dig into the street and locate the uh, where the break was and get that all repaired, which took some time. Uh, it all came down to a very tiny hole, about two inches in one of the pipes. Um, no clear cause. This happens, I guess, fairly frequently. Across Ottawa, there's about 200 similar water main breaks a year and it's uh, just a function of the infrastructure uh, as it as it ages as we have frost and thaws um, anyways these, these things happen unfortunately and uh, luckily the city can get in there pretty quick and get them fixed but uh, this particular pipe is 46 years old and has a lifespan of 85 years and they did do an inspection on it and it it looks fine there's no issues with it but uh, unfortunately we had this unexpected break on uh, on tuesday so thanks for your patience and thanks to all the local businesses 
uh, as well. Uh, if you get a chance, maybe go out today and support one of our local businesses on Main Street between Beverly and Abbott Street. They all had to close down on Tuesday, and that's a, a big hit on their on their sales for a day. So if you have a chance, go out and support a local business. Uh, we posted a list on our Facebook page of all the businesses who were affected, all the retail and uh, food uh, service type businesses who were affected. Uh, some other news, West Nile virus. Uh, Ottawa Public Health last week reported that uh, they've made the first positive case of West Nile virus in mosquitoes as well as the first human case. Um, so a uh, good thing to be aware of and make sure you're protecting yourself as you go out if you're, you're outdoors. You can learn more about how Ottawa Public Health um, manages, monitors, mitigates against mosquitoes on my website or on the Ottawa Public Health website. There's lots of info there, including the treatment that they do citywide in stormwater ponds and catch basins. And if you have a catch basin on, on your property, you can actually request that Ottawa Public Health come out and, and treat it with some larvicide. So um, go to uh, call 311 if, if you'd like more information or to request that or go to the Ottawa Public Health website. And uh, some other good news from Ottawa Public Health. Um, try to try to simplify this here. Uh, wastewater surveillance. This was something that the University of Ottawa launched in Ottawa during the pandemic. Wastewater surveillance, where they take samples of Ottawa's wastewater to look for signals of, um, you know, COVID, uh, RSV, influenza. Uh, it's kind of a, an advanced signal or a good way to monitor the overall health of the population and look for potential issues. The data is used by Ottawa Public Health. It's used by local hospitals. It's used by local researchers. Unfortunately, the province, uh, the money from the province was set to run out on July 31st. But the good news is University of Ottawa has secured some funding to keep it going at least for another couple of months. And it gives everyone a bit of time to continue working with the provincial and federal governments to make sure that that has sustainable funding for the long term because it's a really really useful tool uh, for tracking uh, overall health in our community uh, on my website I've got information about that and I've got information about uh, tips for preparing for summer storms you've probably seen uh, what happened in, in Toronto a week and a half ago and of course we had that heavy rainfall in the tornado near Perth this week got some good information about just preparations, some emergency prep, some home maintenance, things you can do to prepare for summer storms. That's on my website. Uh, we've got a list of new temporary traffic calming locations that are being installed over the next few weeks. We've got information about 620 Bobolink. That's the development between Embankment and Robert Grant Avenue in the Westwood area. They're starting construction, so there's information about what to expect there. And there's information about how you can nominate someone for a Stittsville Hall of Fame award. Nominations are open and go to my website for more information there. Uh, a few things to wrap up. Number one, um, e-bikes and scooters. If you are using one of these, good for you for getting around uh, using a mo more sustainable and active mode. I just wanna remind everybody, including traditional bike riders, if you're on uh, pathways like the Trans-Canada Trail, just watch your speed. If you're traveling above 20 kilometers an hour on a busy pathway like that, uh, it's it's probably not a safe way to be traveling. So uh, please, uh, it's a matter of courtesy and a matter of safety to keep your speed under control. And if you want to go faster, you can head over to Abbott Street or one of the roads parallel to it. Uh, good news, this Monday, there's some flashing beacons and safety measures being added to the Shea and Fluellen intersection. Uh, to improve safety there, so that's good news. And the last thing is just a, a programming note. Uh, I think I'm gonna take a few weeks off of this weekly video in August. I'm uh, knocking on wood and maybe anticipating a little bit of a slower month for updates in August. So I'll, I'll take a few, a few weeks of break in August and then come back with these weekly updates again in September. But thank you for watching. Uh, these videos reach a few thousand people every week in Stittsville. I uh, really appreciate that you watch these or listen to these on the podcast and stay up to date with what's happening in your community. Uh, and thanks for all your feedback every week as well. Have a great weekend. Looks like a very sunny and hot weekend and next few days coming out. I hope you do get out uh, on your bike, on your e-bike, on your scooter, on your skateboard. Um, out for a walk. Go ahead and explore the community, support a local business, check out the West Side Pride Festival here this afternoon at Alexander Grove Park, and uh, have a great week. Take care.